I'm going to show you three ways you can create a scallop effect in Illustrator and that's coming up in today's video. Hey guys, Chris James here, welcome back to another video. Now last week I did a video on how to create a mandala or a mandala effect in Illustrator and as part of that video I created a scalloped edge around a couple of circles. Now I did it the technique and the way I know but it was only after filming that video that I realised Illustrator has its own designated tool for creating scallops, they call it the scallop tool. Now, I wanted to see how easy it was to use so I've spent this week playing around with it uh, and what I want to show you now is sort of three different ways you can create a scallop effect in Illustrator now they're not going to produce the same results they're not all going to be identical but hopefully by showing you these three different ways you'll be able to adapt them to suit the design that you're creating but also hopefully it will just show you that you can use different tools, techniques to get or produce the relatively same end result so there's not just one way of doing things um, and that's sort of what I want to show throughout all these videos that I'm doing is there's not always just one way to do something so I'm going to sh jump to the Mac now and we'll get started with showing you these three different techniques so I'm here in Illustrator and I've already set my artboard up as always to nine, uh, 1080 by 1080. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the ellipse tool and just create a circle. Now what I'm going to do is just make sure there's no fill and just a stroke. I'm just going to increase the stroke about 30 to begin with and I'm going to click in the stroke to bring up the um, properties panel for the stroke. I'm going to change the cap to round, change the corner to round, and then also I'm just going to click this dashed line. Now, if I zoom in slightly, you can see what it's already done. It's created a bit of a kink within the stroke, but we want to create more of a circular scallop effect. Now, to do that, the dash, we need to put it to zero and then the gap this is when we can play around with it to get the feel and the style that we want I'm going to start off with 20 to see what that looks like so at the moment we're only looking at the outer edge so we don't need to worry about anything inside um, I'll just zoom in a bit closer so we can all see a bit more detail Now, like a good thing that I like doing is once I've highlighted it using the arrow keys, you can just sort of move up and down to get the exact scallop that you want. The only thing I would say is you need to make sure that all the circles are still touching, otherwise it won't work. Um, now, if you're not quite happy with that as it is, you can also increase the stroke um, and that'll just give you a bit more room to play around with. I actually quite like that. Maybe I'll just do it 35. It's like a bit, e bit of a nice number then, 35. So now we've got that like that. Obviously at the moment it's still a stroke. So what we need to do is go to Object, Expand Appearance, Object, Expand again. Now it says fill and stroke, we want to click OK to both and now it's not, it's basically changed it from a stroke to an actual object but we've also still got this white bit in the middle so what we want to do is highlight it, go to object, compound path, release and now we want to make, make them both one shape so we need to highlight them both, go into the Pathfinder uh, tool at the properties panel on the side. If you've not got it here, if you go up to window and down to Pathfinder, it'll bring it up for you. 
And what we just want to make sure is we want to click the Unite button. And as you can see now, it's created this shape and we can change the color. We can give it a stroke if we want. Um, let's make something a bit more bolder. And then obviously we change the roundness, just make it more of a look, not as harsh. Uh, so that's the first technique and that's the way I did in the mandala tutorial. Now I'm going to show you, I'll just go back to the beginning. Now I'm just going to show you how a different way you can create um, the scallop, but I'm going to use the distort and transform tool from the effect panel and click zigzag. Let's make sure I've got it selected first. Now this isn't going to give a definite scalloped edge, but it just creates more of a like a, a rounded wave, if you will. Um, you can obviously increase and decrease the amount of wave, amount of ridges. But I quite like this if you're wanting to just create something like a, a like a sticker or something like that, where it's a bit more rounder, a bit more softer edges, not as harsh. And basically it's just about playing around to get the effect, the style that you want. Um, again, there is like harsh corners, like the zigzag if you will, but I, I rarely use the corner tool and I always click the smooth and start just playing around with creating this. Like I said, you can get some nice shapes and edges to this. And again, that's pretty easy. Obviously, you need to then expand objects, expand again like we did. And now you can change the colour, add a stroke. I know I know that was that's not really a scallop, but it's just helping create like a an edge to the shape to the circle. I know the last way I want to show you is using the scallop tool built into Illustrator. Now I have played around with it, and to be fair, it's not my favourite tool for creating scallops. And I think if I was to create scallops in my designs I'd be persuaded more or pushed towards doing it using the um, outline like the stroke circles and then uh, uniting them both because I feel like it gives more of a symmetrical shape and a bit more of an even end product end result but I'll show you the so this is the scallop tool and it's within all these other tools just below the rotate tool so what you want to do is click scallop. Now to bring up the properties for this tool, you just want to double click or if you're on the tool you can just click the enter button and it'll bring it up. Now this is where you can choose your sizes, uh, intensity. Now the how I've got it now is how I, when I've been playing around with it, this is how I've got, I think this is the ideal sort of um, solution to create the best scallop edging. Now obviously if you do start messing around with these tools you can get a bit more adventurous and crazy but what I'll do is I'll show you the way I've done it using these sort of parameters and then I'll go back into it and show you that changing stuff gives you a different result. So obviously 35277, 1% intensity, 1 complexity and to detail. Now it isn't the easiest tool to use. Um, now you get this sort of circle with the cross section in the middle and basically to use the tool you just need to make sure that the outer circle is touching the shape you want to affect and what I found is you need to be relatively quick doing this. So what you want to do is just go around the circle making sure that you're touching the edge. Now because I've got the intensity down so low, it doesn't change it so quick, so it gives me time 
to go around and sort of perfect any imperfections. But once you let go of your mouse, it does start the all effect again. So as you can see, there's that way of doing it. Now, if you are a lot quicker, oops, sorry, make sure I've got my edge within the circle. You can start seeing like it just affects it slightly. Uh, again, if you're a bit more careful and you just go around at a steady pace. You can start getting more the scallopy effect, but I don't think it's an easy tool to use. From using it myself, it does create some inconsistencies, like you've got nice short here, but then it starts getting a bit more deeper ridges along here, that's a bit more flatter. So I don't think it's the ideal tool if you're wanting something a bit more uniform, symmetrical, but with a bit of practice, you probably get used to it. So like I said before, I'm just going to go back into the properties of the scallop tool. Uh, again, like we can increase the intensity and detail. And now you can see it starts creating more crazy scallops. Now you can go inside, you can bring it outside. As long as, like I said, one of the outer circles is touching, you can create these sort of weird edges and they're all still vectorized. So if you're wanting some quick like edges, you can start creating something. Uh, like I said, it's not the easiest tool and I wouldn't really recommend for doing uniform scallops, but you'll have to give it a go and see what you think. But again, like I said, it's not the easiest tool I'll just go back to my parameters. But like I said, with a bit of practice, you'll probably get some nice techniques, nice edges. Again, it looked all right, but it's not symmetrical. So there you go. So there's three different ways you can create a scallop or a scallop style effect in Illustrator um, using three techniques, using the scallop tool, the stroke and the stroke effect panel, and also using the transform. So there you go. That's three different ways you can create a scallop style effect in Illustrator. Now, they didn't all produce the same end result, but that's not what I was going for. I was going for showing you how you can create the scallop using different techniques so that you might be able to adapt them and not just stick with one way of doing things. So I hope you've liked this video. If you have, let me know below. If you haven't, still let me know below because as always, I'm happy to take on any of your feedback because I want to improve on the videos, improve on the quality, but again, most importantly, improve on the quality. Uh, content. So I'm going to leave it there. Tune in for the next one and I'll see you later.